Hi, I'm Timothy Priscilla, and we're looking at concavity with my Math 1325 class. So here's the function f of x equals 2 over x plus 2, and they want us to find the uh, largest open intervals on which the uh, function is concave upward or concave downward, and find the location of any points of inflection. Well, we know that if a graph is concave upward, f double prime is a positive number. On the other hand, if the graph is concave downward, f double prime on that interval will be negative. So, to determine concavity, we have to find the second derivative, f double prime. In order to do that, we have to find f prime, and I would not encourage you to use the, uh, I would recommend that you use the quotient rule here. What I would do, I would rewrite the function as 2 times x plus 2 to the negative 1 power. I would rewrite the function itself using negative exponents and that's what I would differentiate. Differentiating, let me write that down here, we have f of x is 2 over x plus 2 which is the same thing as 2 times x plus 2 to the negative 1 power. And <laughs> find f prime using the generalized power rule. That'd be a negative 2 times x plus 2 to the negative 2 times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is just a 1. So we have a negative 2 times x plus 2 to the negative 2 power. Then, I would find f double prime. Let me get another color. I'll find f double prime, finding the second derivative. That'll become a 4 times x plus 2 to the negative 3. And it might be helpful to rewrite that uh, using a positive exponent. That's the same thing as 4 over x plus 2 to the positive 3 power. We have to ask ourselves, when is f double prime equal to 0? When is f double prime undefined? Well, a fraction is equal to 0 when its numerator is 0. So, will that numerator ever be zero? If you took that fraction and tried to set it equal to zero, first thing you'd want to do is multiply both sides by that denominator. So we just have the only way that second derivative is equal to zero is if four is equal to zero, and that never happens. So now we ask ourselves, when is f double prime undefined? Well, f double prime, uh, fun, uh, once again, go back to the second derivative. f double prime is undefined when the denominator is zero. A fraction equals zero when the numerator is zero. A fraction is undefined when the denominator is zero. So when is that denominator zero? When x plus two is zero. So when x is equal to negative two. So we draw our number line. There's a negative 2. We're going to look at the sign of f double prime. To the left of negative 2, we'll test negative 3. To the right of negative 2, uh, we'll test 0. Testing negative 3. We're plugging it into the second derivative right here. That's going to give us a 4 over a negative f double prime. That will be a 4 over 
negative 3 plus 2 is a negative 1 cubed. And all that matters is positive or negative. That results negative, so the graph is concave downward. At 0, f double prime is equal to 4 over 0 plus 2. That's a 2 cubed. That's positive. So to the right of negative 2, the graph is concave upward. And we now can uh, write our answers. They want us to determine when the graph is concave upward, when is it concave downward, and they also ask for a point, any points of inflection. Concave upward. Uh, concave upward would be from negative 2 to infinity. Concave downward, that's negative infinity up to negative 2. Point of inflection, that's the uh, interesting part. The point of inflection is an ordered pair. If you take negative 2 and plug it into the original function, what y coordinate are you going to get? Here's the, let's see, where's the original function? The original function is right here. There's the original function. Try to plug in negative 2 there. If you plug negative 2 in for x, you're going to get a 2 over what? Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Is that a number? That's not a number. We do not have a point of inflection. There is no point of inflection because there's no ordered pair at which the graph changes directions. As a matter of fact, at negative 2, when x is equal to negative 2, our graph has a vertical asymptote. And that is not a point of inflection. So, concave up, but I may as well answer everything right here. I may as well write all the answers here on the statement of the problem. It was concave upward from negative 2 to infinity. The graph was concave downward from negative infinity to negative 2. And there was, we choose response B, there is no point of inflection. And an interesting application of uh, concavity is the point of diminishing returns. A point of diminishing returns occurs when a graph is concave upward, when the graph is concave upward, and then changes to concave downward. A good example of this would be uh, avenue, uh, money spent on advertisement. Uh, up to a point, the more money you spend on av uh, advertisement, the quicker your revenue is growing. But after a certain point, additional money you spend is not yielding as high a return, and businesses consider uh, money spent after that certain point as a uh, poor use of your revenue, of your uh, uh, company's money, I should say. So this point here is referred to as a the point the point of diminishing returns. Let me draw it real big. I'm going to make it real big here. Okay. And concavity's changing somewhere out there, and that point it's concave upward to the left, concave downward to the right. That is called the point of diminishing returns. And we'll do an example. Let me see if I have one here. Here it is. Find the point of diminishing returns for the function uh, r of x. And notice that x represents the amount spent on advertising in thousands of dollars. We want to, and this function is only uh, good for x values between 0 and 20. So we'll find our prime. 
derivative of 10,000 is a zero, so we have a negative 3x squared plus a 90x plus 800. Then we'll differentiate again our double prime of x. That'll be a negative 6x plus 90. Now we need to ask ourselves, when is r double prime equal to zero? When is it undefined? It's always defined. It's a polynomial function. So when is the second derivative equal to zero? And that's going to give us adding 6x to both sides, dividing by 6, we're going to get an x value of 15. So let's show that at x equals 15, we have a point of diminishing returns. There's 15. The sine of r double prime oh, to the left of 15 will test. Uh, I'll test 0, smallest sensible value you could test. And to the right of 15, I'll test, uh, I'll test 20. Testing 0, we get r double prime equals 0 plus 90. Sure enough, that's positive, so the graph is concave upward. And at 20, we'd get r double prime is equal to negative 120 plus 90. That's negative, so concave downward. So we do have a point of diminishing returns. Remember I said the point of diminishing returns occurs if the graph is concave upward to the left of the inflection point and then concave downward to the right of the inflection point. In that situation we call the inflection point the point of diminishing returns. So our point of diminishing returns is at 15, and how do we get that other number? The one it typed as an ordered pair, what do we do with that 15? We have to plug that 15 into the original function. Plug 15 into r of x, and that's going to give us, let's see, mm. Let's see if y'all can see what I have there. I don't know if you'll be able to see my display or not, but it looks to me like I'm getting a 28,750. There. I plugged the 15 into the original function for my final answer. So, hopefully this has helped you all. Those of you that uh, weren't in class and missed my discuss, uh, discussion on this, maybe this will help you uh, uh, better understand what's happening with concavity, the second derivative, and the point of diminishing returns. Bye-bye.